Christmas Carol. Old Ebenezer Scrooge sat in his counting house on Christmas Eve. His poor clerk, Bob Cratchit, shivered as he worked in the next room, for Scrooge gave him scarcely one coal for his fire. I suppose you'll be wanting tomorrow off, Scrooge said gruffly to his clerk as the day ended. Well, mind, you'll be here early the next morning. Thank you, sir, said Bob, wrapping himself in the blanket that served for his coat. And Merry Christmas to you, sir. Scrooge snapped, bah humbug. Then he closed the office and went home alone. As he approached his front door, Scrooge blinked his eyes. Was that a face on the knocker? Yes, the face of his former partner, now dead, Jacob Marley. The face vanished as suddenly as it had appeared. But when Scrooge had closed himself into his room, he was startled by the sound of clanking chains. Right through the closed door of his room walked the ghost of Jacob Marley. His arms and legs were wrapped in a long chain from which hung many locked boxes of money. I wear the chain I forged in life, said the ghost to the frightened Scrooge. You are making your own change now, Ebenezer, for you care too much for the business of making money and too little for the business of your fellow man. You must change before it is too late. The ghost told Scrooge that he would be visited by three spirits. Then he vanished. As the clock struck one, the curtains of Scrooge's bed were pulled aside by the first spirit, who looked like a child with long white hair holding a sprig of holly in his hand. From the top of his head shone a bright light. I am the ghost of Christmas past, he said. He took Scrooge by the hand and led him out the window, flying through the night air. They came to rest on a boarding school. The children were all gone for it was Christmas time. Among all the empty desks sat one lone boy reading. His friends and family had not invited him home for Christmas. Why, that's me, said Scrooge. As he recalled his sad childhood, he began to weep. Scrooge was next visited by a huge jolly spirit who wore a bright robe and a garland of fruit on his head. This was the ghost of Christmas present. He showed Scrooge a vision of happy people everywhere, wishing one another good cheer and making ready for the Christmas celebration. Then he showed him the home of Bob Cratchit, where the family were sitting down to a meager Christmas dinner. To Scrooge's surprise, they seemed as happy as if they had a great feast before them. Happiest of all was the youngest child, a frail boy named Tiny Tim, who walked with a crutch. Bob Cratchit said, A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. And Tiny Tim answered sweetly, God bless us, everyone. Scrooge was touched to see how Bob held his little boy close by his side, as if he was afraid of losing him. Spirit, said Scrooge, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. If these shadows remain unchanged by the future, said the ghost, the child will die. Scrooge was filled with sorrow. The ghost of Christmas present disappeared. Then Scrooge looked up and saw a solemn phantom draped and hooded. Though it said nothing, Scrooge knew that it must be the ghost of Christmas yet to come. The phantom took Scrooge back to the home of Bob Cratchit, where all was now quiet and solemn. In the corner, a crutch leaned against the wall, next to an empty little chair. Ah, poor Tiny Tim, thought Scrooge, guessing what had happened. The other family members consoled one another. I'm sure we shall none of us ever forget poor Tiny Tim, shall we, said his father. Never, they cried, as he watched Scrooge's heart reached out to them. Now the hooded figure showed Scrooge a different house, where a dead man lay on a bed, his face and body covered by a sheet. Outside, people joked about the dead man, glad to be rid of him. Spectre, said Scrooge. Tell me, what man that was whom we saw lying dead? The ghost silently led to him to a churchyard and pointed to the name written upon a gravestone. It read, Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh no, no, cried Scrooge. Good spirit, tell me that I may change these shadows you have shown me by changing my life. But the ghost said nothing. As the light of morning brightened the room, Scrooge realized he had been staring at a bedpost. Only a bedpost. When Scrooge discovered that he was alive and in his own bed, and that Christmas morning was only just beginning, he leaped up with joy and vowed to change his life. He would share his wealth. He would help others. He rushed out to buy the biggest turkey in town and he sent it to Bob Cratchit's house. The next day, he gave Bob Cratchit a raise. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he became a second father from that time on. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the city knew. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well. May such good things be truly said of us all. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us everyone.